joining, 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 joining. Here we go. Oh my gosh, look at everybody jumping in here. I love it. It's possible you did, Desi, oh, but wonderful. do I need to do something? Look at there. Yeah, please give that back. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's so good to see everybody. So exciting. Glad to see everyone here. Hey, Bill, I didn't see you last week. Good to see you. Awesome. And Brandon. So Brandon is here. It's good to see you, Brandon. FYI, Brandon's going to be coming up. He's with Rocket Drones, and he is going to be sharing with us here pretty soon. I think that's what on April 30th we have you set, right, Brandon? I believe so. Yes, ma'am. Awesome. Awesome. Brandon. Hey We're there. looking forward to that. All right. We're going to give it just a sec to allow others to jump in here. Does anybody have a great, great story to share about what they've done over the past week? Big shout out, get out, fly. Feel free to unmute and share. I chose not to do the eclipse with my drone because I was afraid of the sensor burning out. So but it was amazing. Just saying. That's it. That's all so, I'm going to say. That's awesome. It's so, so neat to see the pictures that are actually being posted right now. It, they're just incredible. So off offline, we just had a really quick conversation about, you know, how dark it became. So who experienced it? Who was actually there to experience it? Yeah, Brandon, you were? Yes, yeah, Steve was? Awesome. So I didn't realize that it actually also made it cold. It, it, not only dark and all that, but I hadn't even expected that side of things. So, yeah, no, here in Southern California, we, we um, where I'm at, especially, I didn't even notice. I just went, oh, there's like a cloud coming up or something. So, <laughs> awesome. So, really quick, like, I, I want to make sure that we allow people to jump in here. Big shout out to Sheila. She's going to help me run the behind the scenes. But... I want to do quick, quick um, announcements that I have. So I want to make sure I get to those. We're going to let a couple more people in. And then, so I'll do a copy paste. And I'll put some of these links in there. Um, I want to first do a shout out to the sponsor, onthegoVideo.biz. So if you have any drone operation questions or anything i have a link in there for a free discovery call and let's get you flying in the right direction right uh another thing that i wanted to do a shout out is the vertical space magazine oh my gosh i always love reading the vertical space magazine it is so informative there's great articles in there loretta wrote one big moss wrote one Oh, AAM, a lot of different articles and very informative. So I'm going to give you a link to that if you haven't checked that out. And then I saw Adrian jumping on here already. We're going to let a few more people in here. And he has an event coming up. I have a link in there, Adrian, really quick. Do you want to share about your event that's coming up? Yeah, thanks, Desi. So essentially, we're hosting one of the largest drone festivals i like to call it well we'll have drone light shows a lot of you know real life scenario demonstrations all in the backdrop of the san diego uh coast hopefully we'll have a beautiful sunset right next to the uss midway aircraft carrier this is going to be a phenomenal event uh we'll have a lot of folks that are on the call today not only be there, but receiving an award. So uh, if you're in San Diego in, in, in a couple of weeks, definitely check out the Autonomy. It's going to be a phenomenal event. And we have uh, country music star Houston Bernard performing, as well as a lot of other surprises. So thanks for the shout out, Desi. Always appreciate it. Awesome. Awesome. I'm looking forward to it. And, you know, I just love drone light shows. They're amazing. So definitely looking forward to that. Plus all the networking and everything. So it's going to be an amazing event. Looking forward to AUVSI coming up as well. Um, I did put links in there to everything and including the Vertical Space Magazine and such. So feel free to check out the chat. And then we already have a question in the chat. Can we get the recorded session? 
Yes. So Johnny does the uh, replay of it. Once it's edited, it goes to Women in Drones Library. There you can get all of the uh, replays. So yes, it will be recorded and uh, available. With that, I am going to segue over to our spotlight speakers. I'm very excited. I've been counting down the days till we would have representation from AMA, the Academy of Model Aeronautics here with us. And we actually have several speakers here. And so I'm gonna segue over to Steve. Steve is going to introduce himself, tell us about the AMA. And Steve, can you also introduce your team? Cause you have amazing people here with us today to share. So I'm gonna make it spotlight for everyone, all right? There we go. Yeah. Hey, hi, Desi. It's good to be here. Thank you for inviting us. We are excited to do this. I have with me today, I have Rachel Hahn. I have Austin Perley. And then I think I'm teamsing with Gwen right now. She's trying to get in there, but we'll also have Gwen Mathis with us today. And they'll introduce themselves when they speak and give you a little bit more on their background and what they do for the foundation. So uh, but yeah, it's it's wonderful to be here. I've been following you for a long time, Desi, and, and some of your folks and what you're doing. And it's wonderful for aviation, for women in aviation. And, and we're just excited about being here. Um, I think Austin is going to bring up our presentation. Right. I made everybody spotlight so you're able to share and... Um... Share your passion here. All right. Yeah. Feel your passion. Uh, hey, there we go. That must be <laughs> right on track. <laughs> so again, Steve Haston, I'm the uh, foundation director for the Academy of Model Aeronautics. I come from a public safety background. I ran a drone program for six years doing emergency response and all of that. And then uh, super uh, lucky and blessed to be uh, hired by the Academy of Model Aeronautics. I'm a modeler myself. I've flown since uh, the late 60s. And um, so, yeah, it's like a dream come true. And really, the foundation wants to make that dream come true. And the AMA wants to make that dream come true for all of you and, you know, so many other youth that are out there. Austin. Uh, yeah. Hi. Can... I... Oh, I was, I'm sorry. I was going to say just move forward if you want. Sorry. Okay. Okay. I was like, I can introduce myself or do it later. Um, here we go. Okay. So, um, the uh, Academy of Mo Model Aeronautics was uh, founded in 19 or 2013, and uh, our mission really is to inspire our members and partners to support the AMA in providing those philanthropic gifts and donations um, and to encourage partnerships because we have so much to offer. And I'll, and I'll tell you, um, gang there, uh, that... Um, our members are amazing. I mean, they are so passionate about this hobby um, and this sport that um, they, you know, they want to give of their time, their their talents, and their treasures, and you know, just grow this for the youth and so much of what it does um, for aviation. Awesome. Um, so, our main thing is to support the missions of the AMA. We are the financial branch for them, um, for example, in advancing model aeronautics. And I always like to say that model aeronautics advances pretty much everything in, in aviation. And I'm going to name drop here for a minute. So we have members like Hoot Gibson, who uh, piloted the space shuttle on a couple of occasions. Um, Bert Rutan. I think everybody knows Bert Rutan. And he was a modeler before he was creating some of those amazing aircraft. So just think about it. If model aviation hadn't been a part of his life, would he have gone on to do the great things in aviation that he has done? Or would he have chosen some other career path? You know, we don't we don't know, but but we know that it does help. And then there's thousands, if not tens of thousands, of other professional aviators who are part of the Academy of Model Aeronautics. And I think it's safe to say that virtually everything flying today started at some point in time as a model, right? 
I mean, I remember the space shuttle being models and showing some of those things, little scale models. And then, Rachel, you may have to help me here, but Red Jensen, who is a NASA person, am I right in that, like, his number one question for hiring people is, are you a part of the AMA? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just amazing what, what it does, and, and we get to support that and advance that. Um, providing educational opportunities and resources. Gwen's going to talk about that quite a bit. Um, so supporting competitions. So since 1936, the AMA has been supporting competitions and just helping to grow that sport. Um, and, you know, as we get a little bit more into this, we'll talk a little bit about some of those amazing things they've done. Another thing is the Academy of Model Aeronautics has a table at the with the AMA or I'm sorry with the FAA so some of our language helps shape what that is looking like for future operations of unmanned aircraft particularly with um with our model aviation um and then as we talked a little bit about just fostering innovation and creativity who knows what child or youth is out there today starting to fly model aviation and what they may be able to do in so many different STEM verticals uh, moving through their life. Awesome. Um, so why are we so passionate about supporting the AMA? Um, as I said, the, the Academy began in 1936. Um, we'd have all those missions that they support, they want to bring to life across the country. Um, we have 180,000 members and always growing, and then 2,500 clubs across the country who support and fly um, under the AMA flag, and, you know, they're they're bringing youth to it, um, and it, it's just a very prolific community, very giving, knowledgeable about all things uh, aviation. Um, I was out on the flying field this past summer and I walked up to a couple of guys as I always do and I said you know how are you I introduced myself and then I asked them what they do uh, these two gentlemen were from NASA and they were part of the engineering team that developed and put the heat shields on the space shuttle so and they were out there flying their you know giant scale free flight aircraft so um, pretty amazing stuff uh, next so I guess my first question, Desi, and to the audience there, is anybody here an AMA member and and or have you flown RC? Awesome. Throw it in the chat. We'd love to know. Awesome. Yes. Just a little bit. Up. Oh, yeah. Jim is on here. Jim's online. <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. That's I'm awesome. a 50 year member and I've got every endorsement except turbine. And that's because I'm an electric guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> Hi, Jim. There's our superhero, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I encourage you all to take it up, you know, get out there and, you know, do some RC things, whether it's flying cars, boats. I mean, we love, we love it all. If it flies, I, I love it. So, um, and I will say too, some of our partners currently include Wing. We're partners with EAA. We're partners with Dubro, who is our headline sponsor for um, uh, the upcoming fl fun fly that Austin's going to talk about. Um, local community Muncie Visitors Bureau is is in in there with us and really support us. The Air Force and then uh, Ball State University is just down the street, and the Ball Brothers Foundation is a partner of ours as well. So. Um, we love our partners. We're all aviation centric and we're all, you know, promoting the same, the same great uh, verticals. Uh, next, Austin. Awesome. Um, so, as, so as we say, the hobby turns careers. The AMA truly is a pipeline to, for so many youth and young adults to enter into really every STEM vertical there, there is. Um, so we believe in that. We believe in that mission. Um, our members believe in that. They help us 
support and fund these programs that we push out that Rachel's going to talk a little bit about. Um, and so, again, because of all these reasons, the AMA Foundation was formed, and we're super happy to be here. And uh, and thank you for letting us be on your on your show today. And I think it's going to, Desi, we'll turn it over to Austin when you're ready. Yeah. Go <clears throat> go ahead. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Austin. I've been with the foundation since 2019 in a bunch of different roles. Um, so I've been with them for a while now, but I am going to cover our upcoming event, the AMA National Fun Fly, which is June 28th through the 30th this year. Um, it will be open flying all three days, um, but our big community of the day will be on Saturday the 29th. So that's mainly what we're going to focus on. I do have a video here, so I hope this will play. It looks great, but there's no sound, Austin. Oh, no sound. Hmm. Rachel, can you link it, link it in the chat so that people can watch it um, if they want to? We'll keep going. Um, it's just got some background music to it. But that's kind of uh, our promo video for the event this year. So we are completely revamping the fun fly from what it's been in the past. Um, it will be, again, June 29th is the main community day, and it'll be at the IAC in Muncie. Um, we are utilizing all 1,100 acres of the property. Um, the National Model Aviation Museum will be open to all of our visitors and um, people there that day for free. Um, the event itself is free for everyone to show up and attend. It's family-friendly. Um, and there will be not only model aviation events, but also full scale stuff going on as well. Um, some of the free activities that will be going on are you can build and launch your own plane and rockets. Uh, there will be EAA Young Eagles flights for those um, 8 to 17. You can take a full scale flight for free. Um, there will be paraglider flights and demos. We plan on having a speaker series from different organizations and people. So currently we have women in aviation, um, some engineers, and a few others. There will be multi-GP drone races and drone delivery demos going on on site. There will be a model aviation air show. We'll have tours of the IAC going on throughout the day. And as Steve said earlier, we've been working with Ball State students. They have been creating an all new digital map of the site and it's going to be interactive. So you can open up your digital passport and check off places around site. And then you can redeem those for a prize or an item as it gets closer to the end of the day. Um, there will also be some other things going on, boat racing, we'll have Cabela's there, we'll be at our pond doing some activities. Um, there will be other flights going on, biplane flights for a low cost, and there will be food trucks, a raffle, and we'll have some local businesses to the Delaware community, such as um, a local animal rescue, we'll have adoptable pets on site too that you can meet with. Um, here's our flyer, our save the date for the event. If anybody wants to screenshot it, um, feel free to do that. We do have a registration link. If you go to modelaircraft.org slash funfly, if you would like to fly during the event, you can register ahead of time. Um, again, it's completely free to register, but we are pre-selling shirts um, at a discounted cost if you would like to order one ahead of time. Otherwise, we will have some on site to sell too. They'll just be a little bit more um, than the pre-order. And that's kind of um, a, an overview of our big community day. Lots gonna be going on. <laughs> oh my gosh, it looks amazing. 
Amazing. And it looks like uh, here's some more specific information about the paramotor portion. Just so many different verticals for the event. And and so uh, I like that you even incorporated the boat racing. I went to an event in Pomona years ago, and it was just so exciting. And just to have that whole networking going on. Oh, this is going to be amazing. Awesome. We're all really excited for it. It's a completely revamped and renewed event. So, but. so I will go look for a link possibly if somebody wanted to, um, if they weren't able to do the screenshot of, of the QR code, uh, I'll look for a link for everyone to put into our chat. Okay. And then that, if we want to segue over to Rachel, I will be looking for the, the link. And it looks like it's already in there. Okay. Um, so we have a lot of grant programs here through the AMA Foundation and AMA in general. <clears throat> I'm ready for the next slide, Austin. So we one of the ones that we started last year is the Al Cancer Memorial Save a Life Grant. It allows clubs to um, get reimbursed for purchasing an AED to make our club location safer for everyone. Um, some of our clubs are located in remote areas and it takes quite a while to get to emergency services. So this way they have that available at their sites. Um, they can get up to 25% of the cost of the AED or up to $200. And last year we gave out five of those. And then we also have the club recognition and reward grant, which um, kind of rewards clubs for promoting AMA and promoting the hobby in a positive light. A lot of them will have events and they will contact the local media, the newspapers, um, the radio stations, local TV stations, and have them come out and do a story about their event. And a lot of times they have them as a fundraiser for another nonprofit, like an animal rescue group or a medical group or um, a bunch of other things. And we've awarded over $10,000 in those. <clears throat> we have a disaster relief grant. Last year, um, we sent quite a few of those to um, the people in California that were affected by flooding. Um, we have clubs affected by tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes. Um, basically, they just have to apply for it and they can get up to $1,000. Now we increased that grant amount last year. Um, we gave out several last year. We've gotten, given them out. Uh, about $90,000 since we started in 2005. It just kind of gets the clubs a uh, little assistance in getting things cleaned up and clearing the roadways and getting things back open so they can enjoy the hobby and fly again. Our flying site improvement grant um, is one of our more popular grants. It allows clubs to apply for funding for projects they have recently done or plan to do to improve their flying sites. Uh, we have uh, right now, we're in the judging period of those grants, and we'll be announcing the winners in, uh, sometime in May. Um, we had 90, well, we had 101 applications this year, which is pretty high compared to last year. We had like 38. So the judges definitely have a tough, tough job this year. Um, we can give clubs up to 25% of the cost of their projects uh, with a cap of $3,000. And since it started in 2002, we've given away $731,000. Take Off and Grow Grant um, basically gives clubs funding to help them promote the hobby, whether that's uh, no matter what genre they like, whether it's pylon, um, RC, drones, any of it. If they have some kind of event to introduce the hobby to the public, they can get up to $1,000 for, for their event, and uh, they can use it however they need to, to to promote the hobby and share the hobby with their local communities. <coughs> Um, our Save a Life Grant, the Recognition and Reward Grant, and the Disaster Relief, those are open all year. As we know, like, disasters don't just happen in the spring and the fall. They're kind of all the time, unfortunately. So um, we have those open all year. And then the Flying Site Improvement and Take Off and Grow Grants, those always open on October 1st and close on February 1st. So um, we'll be opening them up again this year on October 1st, 2024. We also have a scholarship program, which is, uh, I think it's a pretty robust program. Uh, we have our students can apply for various scholarships. Um, they're based on uh, their, 
their academic achievement. We have to see like their SAT scores. We, um, based on their, how much they participate, participate in the hobby. There's one that says you have to have competed for three years or been in the hobby for three years. Um, they're evaluated by their peers and mentors on their character. And we started the program in 1970. I've actually met our very first scholarship recipient. And um, since it was started, we've awarded $1.35 million in scholarships to people. Um, they can either be getting ready to go to college, be in the middle of college, or um, we've opened it up to trade schools now so that people can go to more trade schools for higher learning. All right. We do have Gwen Mathis should be in here. She has her own slides for some um, extra education department initiatives and programs that they run. So I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that she can pull up hers. While while they're doing that, Desi, um, I just want to I want to say so you can see how our members they love to support aviation. I mean, you know, we are so proud of the scholarship program that the education department has, you know, manages and the amount of funds that we're able to push out and, and support them um, is just a testament to how um, much this program at the AMA, you know, helps support that. And, and we, we love it. Awesome. In the enthusiasm and, and, all that you show towards it and the dedication. And um, many of us have been members for a very, very long time. And it's just so exciting to see what you're doing in the industry. And so um, we do have Gwen up if she wanted to. I made her spotlight if she wanted to share. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to put those into the chat. This is a great time to ask questions. Um, I know I already have a list of them, but uh, I want to make sure that if anybody has questions to feel free to put those into the chat and we'll be able to address those. And with that, let's segue over to Gwen. Hi, Gwen. Hi, uh, thank you so much for having me today. Um, are you able to see the model aviation student? Okay, perfect. Um, I haven't used Zoom in quite some time, so I wanted to make sure. Um, so I just have some of our AMA educational resources for you today. Uh, first up is our model aviation student clubs. Um, or our masks. So model aviation student clubs provide schools um, or school aero modeling clubs a means to charter their group with AMA. So luckily, um, it is a perfect fit for middle schools, high schools, homeschool groups, or scout troops. So it doesn't necessarily need to be within a classroom setting or a school setting. Um, just any educational air modeling setting is perfect. Uh, masks are a perfect foundation to build your student aviation club on. And um, that is because uh, the, excuse me, sorry, one second. Um, <laughs> The model aviation student clubs give the clubs the chance to charter their um, flight site from AMA. So we do waive that chartering fee for clubs so that they are able to have that primary flight insurance. Uh, each mask does have an adult group leader. So the leader receives a full AMA membership, including a monthly issue of the AMA's uh, aviation magazine. So that is awesome for that individual. They are able to get involved with AMA through the cost of the mask. We do have students, the AMA youth members, we do have them pay $15 a year. That does include their insurance and their subscription to our aviation magazine, which I do keep mentioning. And I just realized I didn't get into that. So our model aviation magazine is a wonderful resource for all sorts of model aviation news and reviews from our members and such. So it's a really great resource, really great read if you enjoy model aviation. If you have any questions about masks, um, you are able to reach out to uh, the AMA education team at education at modelaircraft.org. So uh, the model aviation student clubs, highly recommended if you are wanting to form a group uh, that is specifically geared toward aviation. We also have our Know Before You Fly student drone kits. So these are drone kits that teach ninth to 12th grade students about science, aerodynamics, engineering principles, aviation principles, drones, and safe flying practices. 
So thanks to the FAA and uh, the Know Before You Fly organization, we were able to share 2,500 of these kits to educators for free. We no longer have those free kits, but the kits are available for purchase. But this curriculum, which is totally free, is awesome for any sort of drone. You do not need to have this drone kit. Um, I will get into the drone kits in just, a, excuse me, I'm sorry. I will get into the drone curriculum in just a moment. Uh, the kits, if you are interested in those, those do contain the necessary components and detailed instructions to assemble a small drone, including goggles and optional FPV flying. And I actually, sorry if I can reach over, have one of those drones right here. So it's very small, but it's perfect for, for a classroom setting. Um, it does come disassembled, so part of the curriculum is building it. Um, and we do have uh, access to the instructional build videos, professional development webinars, and a custom unit of study with a variety of lessons and activities for students to use. So as I said before, that curriculum, totally free. Uh, if you were to use your own drone kit, the only part of the curriculum that wouldn't really apply to you is that building aspect of it, but the rest of the curriculum could fit in with whatever you introduce into your educational setting. These resources are completely free for anybody to use. You are able to purchase these kits from that QR code link if you were interested in those. And the really awesome thing about the Know Before You Fly student drone kits is that they do encourage students to pursue careers in aviation related fields. Um, and this is in support of the FAA's aviation and space education goals. The final resource that I have for you today, which is not all of our resources, these are just the resources that we think that you would like the best. This is UAS for STEM. So UAS for STEM is the AMA's multi-rotor drone competition. It is a search and rescue challenge that is um, very, very well liked by our participants, past and present. Um, there are two levels of competition, beginner and advanced. So the beginner level makes the competition more accessible for new teams, just because we do have to advance this competition every year because it is incredible what these children are able to do. Through our program, they get to learn, practice, and demonstrate uncrewed aircraft system knowledge, mission planning, flight skills, data collection, analysis, and safety practices in a competitive team-oriented environment. UAS for STEM is a challenge uh, for students aged 11 through 19. Each team is composed of four to 10 students with an adult mentor or manager. They do sometimes have assistant managers. So if you are really interested in this and you do have another adult that you would like to join in with you, we are more than happy uh, to make sure that you and your assistant manager are welcomed into our program. There is a required ground school component for this competition. This ground school is very well thought out. It's um, very, very in depth for the students. It covers things such as ethical airmanship, flying in safe weather, uh, safe flying practices, all sorts of things. I think one of the first things that I did as, a, as an AMA employee was this ground school, and it was very helpful for me learning all sorts of things about the competition. So the ground school is a required component. We do want our students to be able to fly safely and understand what they are doing. There is a virtual preliminary competition in the early spring, so that is actually coming up for us right now. Uh, so the teams are preparing and it is a very exciting time to get to see what they've been working on since they registered. They will present their flight readiness reviews and we will have judges from all sorts of organizations. We've um, in the past, we've had individuals from FAA, we've had individuals from NASA, and so these kids get a lot of interaction from all sorts of industry professionals. Our top scoring teams are invited to participate at the in-person competition at EAA Air Venture Oshkosh. Um, if none of you have, or well, if not all of you, excuse me, have been to Oshkosh uh, to Air Venture, it is a wonderful time. It is the busiest airport in the world during that time. So the fact that EAA puts a lot of trust into our competitors, especially with um, their ages, just because, you know, they are 11 to 19, which is pretty young as, as far as it goes when, when flying 
you know, machinery, very advanced machinery. Uh, so it really speaks to the professionalism of these kids and how dedicated they are to the competition. So as of right now for UAS for STEM, we have um, closed registration just because it is getting close to competition time, but we love UAS for STEM and would be more than happy to have a conversation with anyone who is interested. So please reach out if you are. And those are all the educational resources that I have for you today. So thank you for letting me have some of your time. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Amazing opportunities. That is fantastic. So um, I've been trying to keep up with the chat. <laughs> oh, there's there has been some questions that have come in there. I want to do a real quick thank you to Kyle and to Sheila. They've put in a lot of the links. Oh, and Rachel has, too. I'm sorry. And they have put in a lot of the links to the conversations that we've been having right here. And so I'm going to circle back to our chat, if you don't mind, real quick, like, because there's been a couple of questions that have popped up in there. And so um, it, with so much conversation going in here, I'm going to rely on Sheila in case I've missed one. Um, I think the starting up at the top, uh, Kyle's already answered this, but just in case someone was not able to watch the chat, uh, Brandon had asked about, is this uh, event, is your event still open to vendors? Uh, Rocket Drones would maybe want to uh, be supporting as well. So Kyle has responded. Is there anything that you'd like to add as far as like if somebody wanted to be a vendor it, for your event? Well, I'll say first off, we'll, we'll drop a link in uh, to uh, Aaron. Dobbs, who handles all of our vendors, and she's an, she's an amazing woman, and uh, you can contact her directly. Austin, we're we're still wide open for vendors and welcome, you know, welcome everybody. Awesome. And there's no cost to the vendors. This is a this is free for vendors as well. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I, love I will it. drop. We have a registration form for um, like exhibitors and stuff like that. So you can register there and also get in touch with Erin so she can help get everything hammered out. Okay. And can you remind us again of the dates for the event? The full event will be June 28th through the 30th. All three days will be part of the fun fly. The big community day will be Saturday the 29th. If you're in the area, highly recommend that you attend. It's going to be phenomenal. Uh, as a teacher, this is circling back to our chat. Uh, as a teacher, Sharon Kavanaugh has asked, uh, um, as a teacher of the drone pilot in education, she is interested in starting a club in her area. And so do you have any advice regarding starting a club, checking out local clubs, that kind of thing? Anybody want to step up? It could be Steve or Austin, or Rachel, when? I'll admit clubs are not my forte. I'm not sure if um, Rachel has an idea or Austin. We do have a clubs department here at AMA in Muncie that can help you with starting a club and getting your club registered and getting it on our database. We have a database where you can see all the clubs across the country. Um, I'll put the email address in the chat so that you can contact people. Thank you, appreciate that. Awesome, awesome. And obviously the resources that Gwen has provided for the training aspects of it. And, and as a teacher, I bet that is extremely valuable uh, link to have for you as well, Sharon. And so, um, uh, NCA, who is also known as Tawny, um, <laughs> uh, from a school district perspective, what can we do to encourage collaboration with local AMA clubs that are resistant to the use of fields for educational rotocopter use? Any suggestions for that? I have to say, I have been very blessed that my local AMA field has been very open to it, uh, but I have heard that some uh, are not quite as welcoming as others. So is there anything that can be done? 
Any suggestions? Anybody want to jump in on that one? Um, I would remind them that youth are the future of the hobby. I mean, we need youth members, we need young members, and we need new members to get interested in the hobby and the sport. That's what I would remind them of, and that we actually have an educational program at AMA, and we are focused on youth. Yeah, and it looks like Kyle Jarris is in this, too. He's our education director. I don't know if he has anything that might be beneficial to add. You got to be careful with that, Austin, because I usually share too much. Like, so I won't, I won't bogart the conversation here, but I will say uh, we do have a lot of clubs and, and that means there's a lot of variation. Oftentimes, some of the concerns with that club is, okay, well, we have insurance on our site for our members to fly. What happens when youth get involved? What happens when we bring a whole class or, or several classes uh, out to our field. And, and that becomes a lot of the liability questions that those clubs have oftentimes and ends up being a sticking point because there just aren't enough uh, resources available to them to help them feel comfortable. Uh, one of the best ways to get around that, though, is to start up uh, what Gwen was talking about with a model aviation student club. Um, those uh, include memberships uh, for the students at $15 every year, but that includes digital access to all of our resources, including the magazine. Uh, as well as insurance coverage. And that means that those students can get involved at those local clubs in those club fields. Uh, and it, it helps everyone feel a little bit more uh, at ease with bringing them on board. Uh, the other thing is, is many, many clubs have what's called intro pilot programs. And uh, that's a way to become an AMA member at no charge for 90 days, while a mentor helps those individuals, be they youth or adults, uh, to understand how to safely navigate in the airspace, how to fly an aircraft, a, a radio control aircraft, uh, and uh, really get into the skies and uh, become a part of that club uh, while they go through that training. So that's another opportunity that's there. But, you know, there's so many different clubs, so many different areas. Uh, I, again, don't want to bogart the conversation. Reach out to us and we can help you guys. Awesome. Awesome. Great advice. So, Tani, I see you had your hand up. Did that clarify your question? Did you want to ask a follow-up? You are muted if you did. Um, I know I was muted, Desi. Thank you. And thank you, Kyle, for that information. I will reach out. Um, and I do believe those are valid concerns uh, that you mentioned. However, um, I'm an AMA member. Our, our school does have a club here that we use for um, a drone club. and those questions have never come up so i'll i'll still reach out because uh, i have a few of the students i teach adult school as well so um, a few of the students themselves are also members of local clubs and they say that they run into the same concerns um, i think it's a very good point that you know the youth are the future of aviation um, sometimes the not so youthful are not so open to sharing <laughs> their space However, uh, you know, with concerns about the the way it's being used, which is great. However, it just seems to be such a conflict with the AMA principles and the, you know, the reason for existence, like the premise yep. of encourage people to get into aviation. So I'll, oh, for sure. I'll push a little harder. No, no. Yeah, push harder, but also communicate with me. Um, and, you know, we, we'd love to be able to help bridge those gaps. Uh, uh, and sometimes it becomes you know, hey, on Tuesdays and on Thursdays, we're opening our club to these student members to come in and join and, and enjoy the, you know, the process. You know, that becomes sometimes a scheduling conflict. Well, you know, old guy Frank always wants to be at the club field on Wednesday mornings, and he was there once and couldn't fly and was really pitching a fit about it. You know, whatever it is, it's all people working with people. And most often it's, it becomes a, a, um, a collaborative opportunity to say, look, like these, these youth are excited. They want to learn from, from our subject matter experts. They want to be a part of this community. They want to grow and, and do new fun things. And both sides of that conversation can benefit from it, right? Um, you know, it's, it's such an amazing opportunity as a mentor to be inspired and to think, yeah, this is really cool. And wow, I hadn't thought of it that way from, from some of the more elderly members. Uh, who who uh, are keeping themselves away from that opportunity, it sounds like. So let's work together. Let's figure it out. I have found a few times when I've gone to the AMA field to fly with the, the students. I, I've been, uh, again, very, very fortunate that when the young ladies are there, the people want to share. 
they want to tell them about the fixed wing plane that they're flying and such. And so I find that very inspirational. I, I, again, I feel very lucky that I've been able to be in that position. I'm going to really quick like segue over to Jim who just jumped on the phone. So <laughs> he had a story to share. Uh, he does a lot with the silent electric flyers. And I know that they have had a lot of great, great responses and things like that. So we're going to circle back to Jim. Um, meanwhile, I will jump back over to our chat here because if uh, we're following the chat, there is a lot going on in there. And so let me, uh, looks like um, they're awesome because the college students pay annual youth membership prices. So I, there's some information in there about the pricing. And Chanel mentioned that that sounds like a good Big Brother type of uh, opportunity. And segueing up a little bit, are there any clubs available for students in a two-year college? Yes, Gwen. I'm seeing it. <laughs> yes. So that is with the masks. And I completely apologize that I forgot to say this. Uh, with the masks, we do also offer U masks, which are the University Model Aviation Student Clubs. So those are about the same deal. But the college students do get to pay the youth membership prices, which is really awesome because $15 versus $85 for the same benefits. Uh, not that our eighty-five dollars is our eighty-five dollars covers a lot. Uh, it is a great value. I am not saying anything uh, bad about the adult prices, but it is awesome when you're a college student to save on that seventy dollars. Um, so, those U masks are an awesome resource for college students and university teams. Awesome. And I see Jim is off the phone. Jim, did you want to jump in real quick and share your story? We only have a few minutes left, but love this conversation going. Love what's happening in the chat. So, Jim, go ahead and share. Sure. You know, about the thing that I'd add, uh, first of all, you know, again, lifelong ama -er, okay? So everything you guys have heard today is just some of the greatest information of one of the best organizations around for model aviation, the best organization around for model aviation. Um, relative to setting up your own site in San Diego, we set up what we what is li literally the very first rotorplex designed for multi rotor flying at an AMA site. And uh, how we were able to succeed with that was by getting uh, local po politics involved, uh, and that was reaching out to our local representative and and literally telling uh, her at the time that we solved her problem. And uh, she didn't even know what problem we had solved. And we toned it in with uh, skateboard parks. You know, in the 70s, you had kids taking over parks on skateboards and you solved the problem by building skate parks. So now we had this drone problem in San Diego. Where guys were FPVing just everywhere they could go and they had nowhere to go. So we were able to create a dedicated rotorplex area. And uh, it was Lori Zapp was the congressman at the time or our representative at the time. And I shared it with her. She agreed. She talked to the park and rec departments. They changed our agreement to allow us to leave up obstacles and things like that. But at the very next council meeting, she stands up and she says, I have solved the problem. And I stood there and I went, yes, she did. You know, if you let them own it, it happens much faster. And uh, it, it, was, it was a great way to get a dedicated rotorplex park uh, approved and expanded our land. And, and it, it's been, Desi, you've been there. It's a great place. It is. It is very much so. Yeah. That's a really good time to do a quick segue that the drone pros are going to be having drone safety day there. And so they're very open. Uh, some of the locations are very open to helping and, and doing reaching out. And so um, looking forward to that one. Uh, that's a nice place to fly near Sea Worlds in our chat there. So we are getting up near the top of it. Uh, if we could just one last bit of information that you'd like to share i'll start with steve we'll kind of go around the clock and, and just have each of you maybe share a last little point about uh suggestions tips or anything like that steve go ahead and i'll kick it off with you yeah thank you desi hey i just want to say thank you to everybody who is here today we appreciate you we support you reach out to you know myself rachel um uh, 
Austin, Gwen, Kyle, uh, great folks. We'll, uh, we'll get back to you as fast as we can. We love this hobby. Um, I'm going to drop our uh, foundation website in the chat. And Desi, thank you for having us here. Oh, my gosh. It's been amazing. Austin. Yeah, ditto to everything that Steve said. Um, all I got to add is I hope to see some of you at the National Fun Fly this year. It's going to be amazing. So, yeah. Uh, it looks so fun. I wish I could get there. Let's see. How can I start making my plans, right? <laughs> Rachel. I'll just add if you're thinking about starting a club or you know someone who is, it, you don't have to own the land. You can lease the land. Um, some of our clubs lease land from cities. Some of them uh, put a club at an old landfill. Just I, there's one club that applied for a grant to lease money, lease land from a farmer. Um, you can just start one anywhere. It's just a good idea to start it. And it's a good place to grow in the hobby and learn more about it and advance your piloting skills. Yes. Gwen, you have something to share? Yes. Um, so if you are interested in introducing any of the educational resources that the AMA offers in your classroom, you can find any of those at our AMA Flight School. Um, we do have a ton of free resources for you. Um, I'm not trying to sell you something, I promise. So you can find our excuse me, educational resources at that link that I just sent. And if you ever have any questions about that, I did send the educational email, uh, I think, oh my goodness, I mean, we've sent a lot of messages since then. So it is in there somewhere. I will go ahead and send it again. And you can always reach out to us with any questions or concerns. Perfect, perfect. Yes, the chat has been very busy. <laughs> so I, I don't know if one link has actually come through or not. Is there a place where we can all go to find a local AMA field in our area? Can we put a chat a link in there for that? Um, that way everybody has that resource. And then uh, Sheila mentioned it, but I just wanna do a quick reminder. There has been a lot of information going into our chat and the communication has been fabulous. So don't forget to sh uh, save the chat, all those fabulous links in there. And so uh, head down to the uh, bottom three dots the option comes up to save the chat. I don't know if you could do it if you're on a phone, but I know you can do it if you're on the computer. So uh, if not, reach out because we would love to provide those for you. It's an amazing opportunity. I wanna do one last thank you. Uh, thank you, Steve, Austin, Rachel, and Gwen. Thank you, and Kyle. <laughs> he, he jumped in there quite a bit. So thank you very much for sharing this amazing uh, information with us, but also for what you do. It, it is just building a future. And I always say a building a future for aviation. And so I, I know the event is gonna be a huge success and I look forward to talking with you more about it, so. With that, I'm going to sign off with everybody. I thank you again for joining us today. And I hope everybody gets to get out and have a really good time flying this week. All right. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Bye, thanks, everyone. Thanks, Daisy. That kind of wraps it up.